Hi everyone, back for another video. Okay, we're getting into some quite advanced uh, uh, magnetics. Um, so, next step in the videos is basically more for the intermediate um, level, so to speak. Um, basically, magnetic applications. So, previous videos, the beginner's guides for magnetics, is all about what a magnet field is, what affects it, um, etc, etc. So, now we need to apply that theory and put it into a drive unit, generator, whatever it is we're doing. So, now I get the fun task of uh, uh, bending people's minds. That's the whole point of this, to get everybody to start thinking outside the box, to stop the same things coming around year after year um, that everyone follows and gets nowhere. At the end of the day, if somebody's already done it, then basically uh, there's a very good chance that uh, I'm going to work. Now yes there are people out there that are replicating and adapting to try and make it work. Um, replicating and learning, which is more important, um, and so on and so forth. Let's put the theory into practice now, shall we? Okay, most people know the standard uh, Bedini wheel. Most people know the Newman wheel. Um, I'm not saying they're the main ones or the only ones. Um, everyone also knows how a DC and AC motors work. Wonderful. But they all have the same type of setup. It's basically the field from one magnet. Right? Nothing is really changed uh, to do with the magnet or the magnetic field. It's not coerced into doing something unnatural. Let's put it that way. So this one is to get people to think outside the box and I'm going to dedicate this video to a group of uh, well a friend and um, a group of people that are following his work and that's uh, Mr. Uh, yeah you get this one um, this is kind of a um, hybrid motor if you will uh, some of the research that I did uh, three years ago um, was is it possible to use a standard pulse motor drive coil, a Bedini coil, um, as a generator at the same time? The answer is hell yes. So, the question then becomes can we use some of the more advanced magnetic principles to do better? And again, the answer is hell yes. Let me explain. Here we have a U-shaped magnet. Well, it's not. <laughs> you cannot, even those of us that know uh, magnet manufacturers that can make us custom magnets, right, creating a magnet like that is like nigh on impossible. It can be done but you get all sorts of funky crap going on with the fields. So, instead, we'll make this up out of three magnets. Let me show you. A bit like that. Hey, voila, three magnets. What happens to the field? Holy crap, what happens to the field happens. Basically, you get one hell of a compression of magnetic fields in here. North field in this case, and 
basically it shoots out of here like a ruddy rocket and then arcs round and comes back to the South Pole and I say that literally um, as I always say don't believe me go and try it so standard pulse motor is that you have a coil round about here and you push it away but here's the thing how do you mount this thing? that's a good question if you take a standard Bedini coil right, this magnet here right, that would be the standard one fit to the rotor right, so that these two come up straight up out, out, the, out the rotor um, as if it was the rim of a bicycle right, so the direction of spin is literally up from the page like this so you could literally stick your finger in there and the magnets would whiz past your finger hopefully that explains the setup right. how you mount this is entirely up to yourself right. just be careful spinning mag high speed um, they will go through walls if you go fast enough and they also have a general tendency to disintegrate so as always when you're trying something like this air on the side of caution so hybrid design well first of all you're compressing the magnetic field uh, something that I don't believe I've seen um, I think recently I've seen a couple of people um, do some interesting things with magnetics um, forgive me off the top of my head I can't remember who um, if you message me, um, then I'll include you in the description. So, here we have something to draw around, basically. Uh, these are just laminates from uh, um, a big transformer. Nothing really special. I just have them because I disassembled the transformer. Yeah, the scale's off, but never mind. If you had... Um, well, we'll draw it about here, shall we? Yeah, the scale's going to be completely foobard, but oh well. Yeah, we'll do something like that, yeah. More. Yeah, a bit like that. Oh, there's a courier drive hand. There we go. Uh, little funky drawing there. There's your uh, windings around it. Um, for argument's sake, we're going to assume it's uh, a bifiler, um, similar to what. Uh, uh, John Padini himself uses. You got a huge compression of magnetic field right on the face of the coil, which means you get a lot more torque. However, I said this would be a hybrid, and it will be. Watch this. What happens if you take the core of your drive? Actually, you know, I won't use that. Oh, I'll use a metal ruler. Have I got my small one around here again? There it is. I thought I'd lost my small one the other day. That's much better. Right. Let's try this again. Yeah, my pencil needs sharpening. Oh well. You take your coil. Let's work out some approximate distances. Yeah, 
Can you see that? Hell yeah! Wonderful. Hey, guess what we've just done? You got it. You now have a G-field drive coil. Right? Remember, um, this one would be your north side of your drive coil, and these would be your south, so you get double repulsion. But this type of shape lends to other possibilities. Yes, you could mount drive coil there, drive coil there, drive coil there, drive coil there, and really get some power out of it. However, there's a reason why this video is dedicated to Mr. Angus. He's doing uh, experiments into research for um, Ed, is it Lis Lynn Scallin or something like that? Uh, Forgive me, my pronunciation is probably completely crap on that one. I bet he's looking at the screen head on it now and know exactly what I'm about to say. What happens if you put two booking coils, one pair there, oh sorry, four booking coils, one pair there, one pair there. would they not start to generate power? Just leaving you a moment to mull that one over. Think about it. Let me draw them in. Let me just try and get to some sort of uh, scale here. something like that and we'll sort of shade them in opposite to the drive coil yay da 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 Yeah. How does that look? Anyone ever seen anything like that before? I don't think I have. Anyone want to hazard a guess as to the theory on this thing? Because I can tell you one thing. If you do an arrangement like that, there's no way that I can uh, uh, predict what the hell it's going to do. Um, I'm sure if uh, me and Mr. Angus were to uh, have a good old argument again for uh, a couple of days, um, we might have a best guess. Um, seriously. I mean, you can use standard drive coil. Sorry, try again. Standard generator coils on there, but you'll have one hell of a issue with lens. But if you use, um, well, Ed's work um, and Mr. Angus's uh, explanations as he's going through it all, my God, that's a long set of videos for someone new. But it's 
well worth it. Not to mention the humour. Um, if you use booking coils, um, or basically adds setup, um, then you've already got the attraction there from the drive anyway, which is actually a good thing because you'll get an acceleration of rotor as the U magnet approaches the E uh, core. Ooh. Ah, there's some new uh, new terminology. Told you I'd be screwing with people's brains. So as it approaches, it doesn't not half just get sucked in. Now uh, you obviously need a drive coil capable of repelling that grade of magnet. I uh, should say grade of magnetic field. But I'm pretty sure people can uh, work out how to do that. And then of course work out the um, um, the trial and error of the core sizes that they need, the magnets, etc, etc. What type of magnets to use? Um, any magnets will be wonderful. Um, ferrite magnets um, be careful with ferrites. I mean, well, strictly speaking, be careful with all the magnets. Um, but ferrites in particular, you will find that the if you spin the rotor on its own with no drive coils, the magnetic field will extend considerably out from your rotor. Um, to the point where I'd say, anyone with a pacemaker, don't try it. Um, also, funnily enough, um, there is a story behind this one. Um, those um, uh, those women that are uh, experimenting with um, free energy devices, um, my advice is not to wear um, not to wear underwear with. Um, um, support wiring because it does get attracted to magnets that's all I'm gonna say so neodymiums yep can do that you can get rises perfect uh, cobalt ones yep they'll work ferrites yep um, I'm sure there'll be many other types of magnets that'll work for this as well. Which ones are going to be better? Well, that's down to your setup, I'm afraid. But yeah, thinking outside the box, a single magnet, there's only so much that a single magnet can do. As soon as you start compressing magnetic fields, that is when the fun starts happening. Okay, and there is a reason why I have these uh, laminates out. That's why. This assembled a, a transformer and this one got bent, as you can see. But if you find a big enough one, does that not look like an E-shaped core? That's how you build them. Now, of course, yes, you can do it. Uh, um, you can cut the E-shapes out of steel. Um, you can use solid bar. Somehow. Where there's a will, there's a way. All you have to do is think outside the box. And that's what I'm trying to teach. So, anyone have any successes, let me know. And uh, in the meantime, have fun, take care, and be safe. Bye for now.